Um, I really care about like the things that he does, and I think this is one of the most important things that he's doing. And so I just want to share my thoughts and, and let people know and, 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 let, and let people know what I think is going on because this is incredible. So I think that this is, I mean, this is obviously like completely um, groundbreaking and just like monumental. I, this, this, this is um, earth shattering to people who care about free speech, to people who um, are fans of Elon Musk. And I am both of those things. I've been a fan of Elon Musk way before I even cared about free speech or like knew the importance of it. As a matter of fact, I got, I got this shirt of Elon Musk, which I got him to sign at, um, at an event, a school event that my sister was a part of. And he actually signed my shirt, as you can see right here. It's pretty fucking incredible. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm a huge fan of what's going on right now. And it's really interesting for so many reasons, which I will probably talk about at length, like, you know, right now, even though I'm gonna have to edit it down and cut it down because you guys don't want to hear me ramble for two and a half hours, which I'm probably about to do. Um, this is really, really incredible. And the reason it's incredible, A, is because uh, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing move by Elon Musk, who I'm a fan of, and B, because free speech is the necessary mechanism that reveals truth to us. Uh, and by us, I mean everyone, I mean people, I mean reality. Reality is brought into higher focus, higher resolution by people engaging in discourse and dialogue who disagree. And if somebody who you don't like and has ideas that you disagree with isn't allowed to speak, then it's a sign that you're not living in a healthy society, that you're not living in a society that um, cares about freedom and, and rights. There's a reason why the First Amendment is first. But yeah, like, I don't think that free speech should be a, a political affiliation. At no point will I say like what I think about politics. Um, because I don't believe that it, this, this has anything to do with politics. I think that if you're going to talk about free speech, um, conservatives and liberals, and I know a lot of people, um, conservatives and liberals that I know, um, the ones that are reasonable on both sides are very pro-free speech and think that censorship that's been going on is abhorrent, that it's um, immoral, that it, it, it shouldn't be happening. And, you know, apparently a lot of other people think that too, given that uh, Elon Paul, what was it like, 70 million people, 60 million people, um, asking them, do you think that Twitter adheres to free speech as a, uh, you know, virtual town square, which it is. And 70% um, said no, and 30% said yes. And that's, that, that's, a, that's a stark result. And the fact that he can do that um, with, with an amount of time that probably took him 30 seconds, the, the fact that it didn't take him that long demonstrates in and of itself why Twitter is such an important town square there's no way to interact with 10 million people a day like it, it, it's not possible but what you can do especially for most people is you can make a tweet you get replies like likes retweets and it, it, it brings us all together but it does it, it actually brings us further apart when we aren't able to um see things that we disagree with because it's like it's like sharpening a knife on stone you know like if if you cannot engage with someone that you disagree with you can't make your ideas better and it's not like you have all the answers. It's not like you, you, you have the final analysis of reality. It's not like you have all the results and you're perfect. No, you are imperfect in your understanding, given um, a hypothetical perfect understanding. Um, you're, you're held back by things like your personality makeup, your intelligence, your, um, you know, your life experiences that cause you to look at the world in, in, in a certain way. The, the, the way your personality uh, index affects and, and colors all things that, 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 you, that you view. The only way to um, build something that's taller than that, that uh, exceeds those limitations is by engaging with somebody who isn't you, that necessarily does not share your limitations, um, at least hypothetically so. So given that, it's really, really incredibly important that people um, understand what's going on here because this is a cultural moment where we're gonna see a lot of uh, people show some authoritarian tendencies um, and probably there's going to be some slander and there's going to be some um, hatred. Uh, but you, you, got, you got to see through that and, and recognize that, that what's going on here is very important. You know, it's not just that people should be able to say what they want just for the hell of it. It's that that's, that's just surface level. What, what's beneath that, the, what, what, what holds up the concept of free speech is that everyone is inherently valuable. It goes back to that idea. So when you oppose free speech, you oppose the, the, the 
um, proclamation that people are of inherent value, of inherent moral value. A lot of people that are religious, and I happen to not be very religious myself, but uh, they, they, they put it succinctly um, when they say there is um, a spark of divinity or a divine spark within every single individual. And um, therefore, you deserve to like share that with the world. But the, the fundamental underlying presupposition of free speech is that every person has value and, um, has, and, and therefore should offer that value with the world, offer that potential with the world. And so this, this is super important um, because Elon Musk said in a TED Talk interview recently, uh, which I'll show you a clip of. Well, I think it's very important for uh, there to be an inclusive arena for free speech. Twitter has become kind of the de facto town square. Um, so it's just really important that people have the, both the, uh, the reality and the perception uh, that they are able to speak freely within the bounds of the law. And he reiterated, you know, that free speech is integral to a functioning civilization and that Twitter is the town square um, pretty much by de facto because it's the biggest. And um, because, again, you can interact with people in an nonlinear fashion, which is just um, in a lot of ways more useful, not in every way, but in many ways is more useful than interacting with people in a linear fashion. A good sign as to whether so there is free speech is, uh, is, is someone you don't like allowed to say something you don't like. And if that is the case, then we have free speech. And it's, it's damn annoying when someone you don't like says something you don't like. That is a sign of a healthy, functioning, uh, free speech situation. I think that if free speech is the default expectation, that you, you can expect to be able to say what you want, which is you can expect to be able to say what you want if you walk outside your house, then there's going to be greater faith in the system. Because right now there's not, there's not a lot of faith in the system that, that is uh, the Twitter mechanism of relating to each other, you know, relating to other nodes in the network, which is how you can think of, of, of that. So yeah, th this is, this is a really fucking big deal. Um, I'm repping Elon Musk. Obviously I got, I got my signed Elon Musk shirt, which I have not worn since the day he signed it. I'm going to, as soon as I'm, I'm done filming this, I'm going to put it back, uh, in my dresser so that it, it doesn't get stained or anything as I, as I eat afterwards. But yeah, Elon Musk guys, um, you're going to see also a lot of people um, who don't know anything about him before this just like hating on him. It's uh, it, it, you, that, that's just to be expected. Um, some of the people that I talk to that like uh, some of the people I talk to about Elon Musk have only ever heard like four or five things about him um, because those are the only times that like a little bit of uh, anything having to do with him has pierced their um, their bubble, their their echo chamber. That's what I was looking for, echo chamber. Uh, and as a result, um, they've only heard like really skewed things. Like th there are people out there that, that know nothing about Elon Musk besides the fact that he smoked weed on a Joe Rogan podcast, for instance. Like, hello, like th there's so much more to him. I, I'm, I'm, I feel as though I'm a pretty qualified person to talk about this because I've watched every single video, um, every single original video of him on the internet doing interviews talking to, um, you know, interviewers, et cetera, like doing podcasts. I've listened to every single podcast online that he's gone on. Um, yeah. So and, and like my family was involved with the stuff that he was doing, you know, with, with SpaceX because of my dad, with, um, my sister's schooling, et cetera, even, even technically my schooling, cause his kid, um, went to, went to my school, but that, that less so, uh, more so the other stuff, but um, I really care about like the things that he does, and I think this is one of the most important things that he's doing. And so I just want to share my thoughts and, and let people know, um, and, 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 let, and let people know what I think is going on, because this is incredible. Uh, a lot of people don't think that it's incredible because they, they just have um, sort of a, a hive mind ideology where they where they um, are just told what to think. So if someone says something like free speech is good, and they immediately like put them in a box in a category of, um, you know, deplorable, you know, um, whatever ridiculous label that that people throw out these days, there are many of them, you know, that, that I don't even need to use. But because um, you, you guys you guys know what those are, but um, 
we should stop doing that because it's not helpful and it doesn't create better outcomes and it actually just undermines uh, our relationship with reality. So, so that, you know, it's not a good idea. It's not, that's not a good way of operating. People are going to do that, but I think it's, it's also on the flip side, a, a, a colliding of worlds that could bear a lot of fruit because the majority of people that support Elon Musk, I can tell you firsthand, are liberal. Um, you know, most of the people at the, at the events that I was at, the, you know, the people around him, the people in Silicon Valley, the people that work at SpaceX, people that live in California, the majority of them are liberal. They are, they are, um, they are not very conservative, just on average. Uh, I can only imagine, you know, his, his Twitter following, he has about 81 million Twitter followers right now. I, I would guess that 55% to 65% of his uh, following is liberal, at least, at least. So the reason why I said it's a colliding of worlds is because there are people that, that will try to, like, cancel or defame or slander, attack, um, malign, Anyone that that um, says anything that could lead to the downfall of an ideology of conformity, and as a result, they're going to try to do that with with Elon. But because a lot of his supporters, and I say a lot, I should say um, a strong majority, a strong majority of, of his supporters are liberal as well. There's going to be some. There's going to be some. Um, conversations that are going to need to be had like wait a second that idea that you put forward isn't quite high resolution enough now is it because he doesn't think these things that you're saying he thinks or he's not what you just said he is or um his intentions aren't exactly what you think they are uh you know you, people have to be honest and when they when when they have to be honest they, they, they have to like upgrade their minds they have to they have to think more carefully about things and part of that of course is engaging with dialogue and i'm a fan of whenever anyone engages in dialogue so um, let's 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 get right into it. And essentially, there's going to be um, a very very interesting saga that's about to play out in front of us. The way this is being covered is super funny. CNBC, Elon Musk says he's not sure he'll be able to buy Twitter after 43 billion. So that's the headline. And teases a plan B. Okay, so he he teases a plan B. Uh, which means that they, what the fuck is going on? Okay, I can't click on this article because I, they want me to do something stupid. But, um, so they're referencing the video of him uh, in the TED interview because that's where he talks about a plan B. But, he, he, he never said he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to buy it. He said, I can do it like three times in the video and I'll link that video in the description the rest of this article takes kind of um, a sour tone uh, it, it is CNN so I'm not that surprised but the but the guy like um, talked about how Elon Musk like said he was going to take the uh, company private at 420 a share and how like that's super bad basically but you know just just um some uh like bitter stuff elon musk obviously this this is a lie he had the funding to to take the, the company private and you can read more about that but so yeah it, also this isn't really related so they basically just wanted to write something negative so that that's how they concluded the the article but what i care about is the fact that they quoted him this is this this, this quote is really the most important part also also this is badass twitter has extraordinary potential i will unlock it damn I think we're going to see some very powerful people start to oppose this guy that haven't opposed him previously. And the reason for that is because he's meddling in he, he, he's meddling uh, in an architecture of power that he previously wasn't in. There, there is speech that is illegal currently, but it is um, they, they, they enforce things that uh, are not illegal to say, like opinions ideas. Um, just because people find it offensive doesn't mean that you're not allowed to say it. A good, a good measure of free speech, as Elon said in the video, was does someone that you don't like allowed to speak? Is, is someone that you don't like who says things that you don't agree with allowed to speak? If the answer is no, then it's not a free society. This person makes a great point. 
we're basically paying attention to what one man does because we, we can't have faith in the system to pass laws that protect us. And there, there are reasons for that. Um, a big reason is that the social media technology is relatively recent and Congress moves very slowly, which is, a, which is a problem, but it's still the fact that Congress moves slowly. And also, uh, it's a problem that the tech giants that own and operate these, these corporations um, control a lot of the politicians. So, yeah. This person says, is Elon Musk at Twitter, is his takeover just a plot to get conservatives to buy Tesla? I hope it works. Well, that's kind of a weird thing to say because you shouldn't be admitting that free speech is something that only conservatives care about. Otherwise, you betray, like, all decent liberals. Because most decent liberals agree with the fact that if somebody disagrees, it disagrees with you, they should have the right to say it. So, yeah, obviously, wokeism has had a serious effect on people's ability to say what they think. Um, it's been referred to by Elon as the woke mind virus before in, in previous interviews. It, with the, he did an ir- interview with the Babylon Bee, a satire publication. They write some funny stuff, but he went, he went on there and referred to the like, woke mob and the um, ideology of you know, uh, cultural Marxism as a woke mind virus. And that's pretty, that, 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 that's, that's pretty telling as to what he realizes is going on. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how the authoritarians react to this. And by the authoritarians, I mean anyone who's willing to publicly say they are against free speech. Like publicly, you know, authoritarian. Never before has anyone that, that opposes freedom been on the right side of history. Never once. Not once at any point has the, the people on um, limiting people's rights and uh, yeah, silencing people never has uh, they, they've, they've never been on the right side of history. And finally, a powerful guy with a moral compass is standing up for people, as I said, providing that public square where you can count on being able to say what you think. I, I, part of the reason I don't have a Twitter account is because I know that if I shared some of my opinions, I would not be able to, to share my opinions. They would, um, you know, force me to not be able to tweet. They would take away uh, my ability to, to tweet things. They kick you off Twitter for a week. They kick you off Twitter for a day. Then, then a week, they will um, force you to, to delete tweets. They um, will use the algorithm to throttle certain opinions that they disagree with. All of this is is documented. There, there are people that that it, they get kicked off every single week. Yes, yeah, it's be very interesting to see how the authoritarians react. In this USA Today article, it's kind of chilling to see that they're already calling him a Republican for supporting free speech. That's, I mean, I, it, it'll be interesting to see if they try to cancel Elon Musk. I don't think that that's possible. But them trying to would be a, a high watermark on the on the on the lunacy scale of, of wokeness. That would be a high watermark. Is Elon Musk Republican? Musk's free speech stand on Twitter wins over conservatives. It should win over everybody. Come on. Free speech. Free speech is is not a political affiliation, just to be clear. Free speech is a mechanism that reveals truth as as it is um, braved and taken on. If you're willing to sit down, have discourse, have a dialogue with somebody who you disagree with, then if the conversation is conducted in good faith, then together you can create something that is higher resolution than what you started with. You make the knife sharper by, by rubbing against things. Even if, let's say, we're talking about um, somebody who, who knows very little and 
um, has low resolution opinions and someone who is extraordinarily knowledgeable and spends their entire time uh, engaging in the ideas of the conversation, even if those two have a conversation, if you're really trying, you can still sharpen the proverbial knife. You can still, the, the, the person that knows more can still um, get better. And the reason for that is because free speech is a mechanism for revealing truth. It is not a political affiliation in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's just very sad that it is construed as that because recently in history, there's pretty much only one side that's trying to silence the other. Um, one side that's trying to cancel the other. One side that, that is deplatforming the other. It's not, it, it, you know, it currently happens to be going one way. It has gone other ways in history, but it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. What matters is that, I mean, that fact does matter, but what, what, what's important to realize is that free speech is just um, a way to reveal truth. And if you deny free speech, then you're basically saying that you don't care what the truth is and you would rather like arrogantly live in, in um, a crumbling world of your uh, uh, of your own um, in your own creation and and that's what you get in echo chambers basically you know if you live in an echo chamber and then meet someone outside of your echo chamber you don't know how to deal with what's going on there and that can be very disturbing for people again if that, that, that just amplifies why Twitter is uh, a very important town square is because the the, the uh, relationship with exchanging ideas is not linear as it would be if you're um, living pre-internet. So you can exchange ideas at a rate that is extraordinary. Yeah, pretty much the definition of censorship compliance. Yeah, as if the billionaires who currently own the media aren't trolling at all. Yeah, um, Bloomberg, Bezos, the guy who owns CNN, the, the, you know, they're all just printing their opinions. The difference is, is that Elon Musk is only one person on Twitter and will say what he thinks, but he's allowing everyone else to say what they think. That's a huge difference. Think about it between um, Bloomberg, CNN, you know, every news organization, they're only saying what they believe. The people at the high up are controlling all of it. But on Twitter, you can say what you want. You can say what you think. You can disagree with, it. you can write on Twitter especially if Elon Musk gets this, but you certainly can now anyway, that Elon Musk is a terrible person, that he's, you know, very unsuccessful and not intelligent, and he, he doesn't make cars, he doesn't build rockets, he, he's um, anti-free speech, he's anti-free market. You can, you can say all the things, you can, you can say anything that you want, and um, even, even if it's completely untrue and, um, like, ridiculous, I will still defend your right to say it, because... Because you have the right to say what to say what you want in in America. That's that's the way it works.